Hello and welcome to Fighting Back, our weekly conversation where we help you, the business owner, fight back against the economic impacts of the COVID-19 virus. Recently, I had a conversation with a good friend of mine, Peter Irving. He's a marketing strategist and the owner of Concerto Marketing. I'll play the whole conversation for you in just a minute, but first, I want to talk about a few of the highlights, just in case some of you don't have time to go through the whole thing. So uh, of the businesses that have been hardest by the COVID-19 virus, really there's two basic categories and you're probably in one of those. Either you have customers still that want your products and services, but they can't access them because of the isolation and so forth, or there are those that don't have customers anymore. You've lost your customers entirely because they've gone out of business or they've left the marketplace. Obviously the second one, much more challenging situation. Each of these though requires a different approach. Those who still have interested customers, you need to find an innovative way of continuing to deliver to them. Some of our clients, for example, are delivering their services through the internet, like fitness classes or music lessons, or a cool one is virtual service calls where you bring your phone and you show people the problem and, and then you can diagnose it over the phone. Uh, some are shipping their products directly to customers like chocolates and machinery parts and so forth, but others are coordinating pick up systems at their, at their place of business that keeps customers at a safe distance from each other, like obviously grocery stores and things like that. But those who no longer have customers, those are the ones that have a tougher go of it. Those are the biggest challenges and those are the ones where you really got to get innovative and you really got to think deeply. There are opportunities though, and we have examples of those that are doing spectacularly well by pivoting in that sort of way. For example, one of our clients with a strong competency in sales has pivoted away from selling construction equipment and towards selling emergency temporary beds. It's going really well. Or Bauer, the hockey equipment company, has used their competency in building hockey masks to produce reusable face masks for the healthcare industry. The key is to understand what your core competency is. What are you good at? What are you really good at? And then look out in the marketplace for a need and ask yourself, how can we possibly fulfill that need or that want? I'm not saying it's easy, but if you get creative, there are opportunities. Anyway, enjoy the video and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, bye. Hello, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome, uh, my name is Mark Wardell and welcome to Fighting Back, uh, our weekly webinar helping you, the business owner, combat the economic impact of the COVID virus on your business. Uh, man, it's been crazy. COVID-19 is having an impact on business these days that we have never seen. Sure, I've never seen anything like this in my lifetime, that's for sure. Um, and the tragic thing is, I know some businesses are not going to make it through. It's terrible. Some businesses are struggling like crazy. Some are hanging on by their fingertips. Uh, some businesses are success just because they're in the right place, right time, and things are working out for them. But what can a business do to proactively change their circumstance, to do something about this, to attack marketing in a way that can actually proactively uh, move them forward in a way that might get them somewhere they want to go? Well. We're going to try to answer this question with my good friend, Peter Irving, here today with us. Uh, Peter is president of Concerto Marketing. It's a strategic marketing consultancy based here in Vancouver. Peter's a 36-year veteran of the marketing and communications industry. He's got broad experience, and he's one heck of a great guy. Peter, thanks for joining. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Yeah, it's good to, have, good to see you. Um, you too. So listen, we're going we're gonna to just plow through this today and just see where we can get, you know. Um, Business owners are faced with, like I said, a craziness, like that we've never seen anything like this. And people are really sometimes not sure even what to do, what direction to go. Business, business as normal is not, doesn't exist anymore. So maybe you could just start out by answering, you know, what does a person do? Where do, we, where do they get started? How do they, how can they make some kind of sense out of this and take some steps forward? Well, uh, thanks, Mark, and thanks for your uh, for your kind words in, in in the introduction. Hopefully, we're still friends at the end of this uh, this session today. Um, uh, we're we're uh, we're we're all adjusting to this uh, on the fly. I, as I've said a few times in the last few days, it's it's not likely. I know it. I know I have never seen pandemic on anybody's uh, uh, SWAT. Um, uh, and I'm sure you, you haven't either, um, wars, um, you know, certainly great depression. There are, there are events in history that you can point to, but they're, they've certainly not been in our reference plane. We're all, we're all dealing with this and, and, and putting it together as we go. Uh, it is very, very fluid. It's the definition of fluid, really. Um, so, 
I think that what we've tried to do is is distill it as quickly as possible on the fly. I mean, clients are, are asking, we're, we're doing our best to respond. And um, I think that, that the first thing is really respond. That is the first step. Um, there are things that we've all had to do to ensure that the workplace is safe, to make sure that our workers and, and staffs are safe. Um, that's obviously been the first thing. Um, we've all had family issues along those lines as, as well. And I think that that is um, uh, something that has been uh, right at the very forefront and continues to be and, and probably should should be. Um, what, what has happened though um, is um, businesses have all of a sudden been confronted with a whole raft of, of things that, that they've never been confronted with before. Uh, um, and, and I think that you had a start at this last week um, in looking at yeah. the basics of the business. Um, and, and that yeah. I think is the next thing. Once you get past the safety, um, you get to the basics, right? And maybe yeah, last week, we had that. sure. Yeah. Last week, we, well, people can go and, and rewatch it, of course, but last week we, um, talked with the Peterson Scotia Bank, and we talked about cash flow and trying just, just trying to get a business stable. Uh, you know, first of all, money and cash flow were the, were the first most important things just to kind of get that locked down. So at least the business is able to survive. And then we talked about the internal and the external kind of communication stuff that was important. Again, just to get a business really stable, which is why I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today to talk about kind of what's next. You know, get ourselves a little bit of stability. Um, it's hard. Not everybody's there yet. I mean, you know, and, and it's changing week to week or sometimes day to day. So, you know, businesses have thought they were stable. Turns out maybe they're not, you know, and so, so it, it's, it's, it's been incredibly challenging. But but still, I know people are really looking forward to some insights from somebody that's got the kind of marketing experience that you have. At least give them a framework, like how well, to tell people, you know, here's how you solve your problem exactly. But I know you're going to because I know you well enough. You're going to be able to give people a, a, a sense of a framework of how to think. And that's what I'm really excited sure. to get into. How do you think about this to point yourself in a, in a good direction? Well, I think in our business, the only constant is change. So I guess what I would say to everyone is welcome to my world. Um, and and it it really is a fluid in a situation. Um, I think that to call this a step is even a bit of a miss a bit of a misstep um, because it's going to be it's going to go on for for a period of time, um, and it's going to ebb, it's going to flow, it's going to going to change. In thinking about this presentation, obviously the the concern I had was how can I be relevant to um, a large number of people, all of whom have completely different circumstances. So, so really, what I wanted to do was step back and and try and 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 give as much information as as I possibly can um, that hopefully connects with 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 each and every one of of, of the people here. Um, in terms of, of these next steps, by the way, um, people, everybody's uh, kind of hanging on these government um, programs um, and subsidies and so on and guarantees. Um, even that is, is, is incredible. I think the government is, is working fast and furious, and I think they've made clearly uh, uh, great efforts to get things out as quickly as, as possible, maybe too quickly. Um, and so there, there have been bobs and weaves there and, and, you know, a program that's there today is changed tomorrow and so on. I think we're going to, we're going to see that for weeks and months, uh, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. What we're seeing, um, among our clients in our, in, in our, um, uh, world, uh, are two different types of clients, um, we're, or two different types of businesses, really. There, there are the ones that are in business. Um, and there are the ones right now that, frankly, are out of business. Um, right. And so their starting points are dramatically different in terms of what they have to do right now in order to, to survive. And sometimes that survival is very personal. Um, sometimes it's, it's more, more corporate to be, to be sure, depending on the circumstances and size and so on of the, of the business. But um, you know, event planning would probably not be at the top of your your list rate right, right now, um, uh, because that business is is out of business, um, as are a whole raft of others. And 
um, uh, the restaurant hospitality industry has just been decimated. Um, travel agencies, airlines, cruise ships, the whole travel industry, really. Um, and right down to uh, uh, services, um, um, barbers and hairstylists and um, search consultancies under massive duress uh, at this point. Um, and then there's all the, the personal services, gyms, spas, therapists, those types of, of things as well. There are others that seem the businesses that are still in business um, are really focusing and, and, and no less stressful in many ways on um, how to stay in business. Um, uh, and so logistics, operations, um, technology, all of those things have become um, huge priorities for, for these companies. I mean, government, banks, financial planning services, employee benefits consultants, you can go down the list and, and uh, uh, building supplies, et cetera, et cetera. There's all sorts of essential services, the retailers and all of their suppliers, um, grocery, pharmaceutical, fuel, automotive, thing, things like that. They have a whole different concern than the, the ones that currently are, are out of business. Yeah. Um, so, and I think there are subsets of those, and and we could go on for an hour just talking about that. But um, well, so we, yeah, well, we have, for example, some of our clients they're they're maybe um, manufacturing and they're and they're big deals, longer sales cycles, and so they're in the middle of contracts right now. So they're not necessarily feeling an immediate hit because they've got work that's taking them out a certain distance into the future, but they've got no new book orders, no new business coming in down the path. So even though they're alive right now they're 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 moving towards a waterfall and they can see the waterfall at the end they know they're going to go off the end you know so that's another major concern for for companies that they're, they're an illusion that things are okay right now but they're not at all yeah and exactly right i i think that if if i could summarize in talking to businesses in both of these cohorts it's amazing how similar the conversations are there's a there's a slightly more desperate uh, group um, where where things are very visceral, where it's pretty scary right now. Um, you know, some better than others, but at the end of the day, I think that um, with few exceptions, everybody is 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 really hunkering down and asking the same questions going going forward. So that first step is really more response. It's it's not proactive; it's reactive. I mean, nobody saw this coming. Everybody is doing their best to respond to it as, as best as they, as they possibly can. The second step is assess. Um, simple word, um, but maybe not so simple in terms of its execution. Again, every organization is different. Um, a small you know, one to five person firm is gonna be very different from a 5,000 uh, person uh, organization. But in principle, assessment is key. So I think at this point, there's a time, it's the time for an honest assessment of, of your business. And I think it's going to be a critical platform going forward. We'd all love to have tons of time to be able to do that in a much more scientific, much more rigorous, much more robust way. But the simple reality is that you need to act now. And I think making an honest attempt to assess your business um, is really, really important at this juncture. So what are your core competencies? What do you do really well? And maybe you think back two weeks and think in terms of, of, of your competitive set at that point, what was it that, that you did best? Um, why well, have you- Maybe there's some- Sorry? Sorry, I didn't catch you off. I, just, I think you maybe you're explaining it anyway. I was, just gonna, I was just gonna ask just for the sake of clarity for everyone, you know, how, how we define I've got my own thoughts, but how you define core competency. So for people, um, just really understand what you mean by that. That's all. Yeah. Understanding, I think, what 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 companies do best. What are the things that, that they really excel at doing? Um, some of those are going to be more, more noticeable, right? Outward facing. Others are going to be um, not so much. But understanding what those strengths are is really, really important going forward and, the, and for both of these groups. And the reason I think is because those core competencies may have relevance in other verticals that may become a big part of your conversation uh, going forward here. 
That's, that's key. I think, yeah. Does that that? Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's absolutely. I think what you're saying is is absolutely key. We spend a lot of time with our clients talking about and defining their core competencies so they really understand what they're good at. And what you're saying is looking forward to the marketing opportunities. It's hard to take advantage of any of those marketing opportunities if you don't truly understand what it is that you're good at. And I know it sounds like a simple question, but it's not a simple question. Um, it, 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 there's more to it than that. Yeah, and it, it's even more complicated because the best we, way we know of getting to the to that answer often in, engages external stakeholders in the answer. So sometimes the worst yeah. person to ask about themselves is themselves. Um, yeah, that's a I good know point. That sounded, sounded weird, but um, um, often exactly. you, you want a more objective view. And that's why I'm using the word honest assessment. So who does that? I mean, um, and I think that um, you should be engaging your key internal stakeholders. There may be one. Uh, you may be looking at that person in the mirror. Uh, there may be an executive team. Whatever that group of key internal stakeholders are, um, that's the group that should be, should be um, I think, making this assessment. I also think and would encourage that that you engage people in the organization who maybe have been there for a long time, who maybe have a lot of experience, who maybe have um, you know ex exhibited certain skills along the way that you feel are valuable. They may not even be popular at, at times because they may be contrarian in the way they view uh, things. These are very important voices sometimes in that conversation. Um, they keep the conversation honest. Um, they keep it kind of real. Um, and I think at a point, what you want to do is try and engage your external stakeholders in that in that conversation as well. The people that understand what makes you you and why you are good, where you may even be challenged, um, are your external uh, stakeholders. Ultimately, your customers would be at the top of that list. So um, just, just for example, I'll say, and then because I know we're going, I know that you're going to get into this in a little more depth later as we go through our conversation. But uh, um, you know, understanding you know, a core competency for a comp for a company could be, for example, really outstanding supply chain, and and how and and it could be, or or a certain type of manufacturing capabilities, or a really outstanding ability to market themselves and and, and sell themselves, or or engineering capabilities or something, anything, it could be a wide variety of things. I realize in a whole different, but just to give people kind of a sense of what we're talking about, it could be any of these kind of things. And if you're really great at those things, what you're saying, and I think is excellent, is you can leverage that information then to make a great plan, which we're going to talk about as we go through this conversation. Yeah, you're, you're on it and you're, you're ahead of it. This isn't going back two weeks and saying, why were we really good at, at making shoes? Yeah. This is, this is what is it about your business that made you good at making yeah. shoes? And an environment um, like this, that is I mean, it's always been important. Sorry. I just think it's always been important, but maybe that's even now it's critical. And, and you know, and, and, and people are, there's going to be two sides to this conversation, I think, that the conversation we're having today, and then there's going to be kind of a hindsight, or a, maybe it's a future conversation where you say, when I get myself back together, you know, I got to, I got to, I got to maybe do things differently next time, <laughs> you know, that not yeah, put off exactly. things that I, I felt like uh, the, the old Stephen Covey quadrant that compares things that are important uh, and, and urgent. Um, and, you know, that stuff that feels normal in normal days of business, unimportant, or pardon me, <laughs> I'll try that again, things that are uh, not urgent, but really important are the things that we tend to put off to one side and all of a sudden it's too late and you're like, whoa, you know, so... Um, got to make sure we hunker down and, and focus on those things going forward. Sorry, yeah. Patty, off. go ahead. And this is about now. You bring up a sense of urgency. That'll come into the conversation here as we go. But there is real urgency. And clearly, there's urgency that, that comes from the adversity that people are experiencing. But I think that there are going to be three different um, groups that emerge from this. There are going to be those who, who don't make it, as you alluded to earlier through no fault of their own in many cases, um, but they're just not going not going to make it. There are going to be the survivors, and the survivors in many cases will be organizations that are right now hunkering down and figuring out how we can actually get through and keep our heads above water until uh, we can get through this. Um, and I think that that's an an integral part of this process. I would put that into the previous section to that response section 
which is to make sure that the lifeboat is is in place and 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 you have your time and space, whatever that is, to figure out the next steps. But I think the third group are going to be the thrivers. And I think they're the ones that are going to be working their way quickly through a process like this so that when the dust settles, when the clouds lift, they're going to be ready to go with a, with a plan um, uh, that will unlikely be perfect, but it'll be a plan. And I think that relative to everyone else, they're going to be ahead of the ahead of the pack. That's that's the focus here in in in, in doing what we're proposing. Good. So, I think that um, um, in addition to that assessment being a self evaluation, I think it should involve your stakeholders and your customers, right? And I think that the customers um, they're going through all of the same things that you are right now. Only everything's different. Their challenges yeah. are different, their priorities are different, but they're going through exactly the same thing. It's really important that you understand from them what they might need. Um, what can you do to help them now? What do they foresee as their problem in the next 30, 60, 90 days? If you aren't aware of those things, you aren't going to be in a position to serve them as well as you possibly um, could. So, um, I think that at that point you're asking, you know, what can we maybe do better? What can we do more? What can we do maybe different from what we were doing two, two weeks ago that's gonna make us um, more relevant um, for them? The process of engaging that, that stakeholder group um, is, is a powerful thing because now you're partners. Now you're in this, in this together and that in itself um, is is a is an important element in this. We've so, been emphasizing that over and over again. You know, n not just in these webinars, but but with clients that we're all in the same boat right now. Everybody's in the same boat, and and uh, and so communication is, as you've said, it's just so incredibly critical uh, because um, uh, w without that, people start to just uh, close the doors around themselves, right? And then and then we become every man for himself uh, rather than uh, kind of being able to kind of work through this together. And, and because this is this is not a normal kind of recession, I think and because this is a really different, this is a virus that came in and as I you know ripped, essentially ripped out employees and ripped out customers from from people's businesses. It's just it's, it's an external force that just come in and, and hit us over the head with a two by four. I think that makes what you're saying even more, uh, even more important, this, this group mentality. Otherwise, people just start, you know, pushing off payables and, 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 and the whole thing starts to, starts to collapse. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think there's a, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different levels. This is like a, a great big onion for sure. But I would suggest that at the very core, um, there's a pragmatism around this behavior, right? Because you aren't going to succeed on your own. You're, nobody's gonna get through this on an island. Even though we're all isolated, None of us are alone, right? So exactly. that I think is is really, really important. And I think that your understanding, there's gonna be so many variables that, that you're gonna to have to contend with over the next weeks and months. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna get into, into your cave, come up with that perfect plan, and then go to launch it to the to your key stakeholders and find that it's absolutely irrelevant because you no, didn't take your time to figure out what they needed or where they were at. You don't wanna be solving a problem they don't have, and you don't wanna be not solving a problem that they do have, right? Um, so- totally. There's not time for some to come up to that conclusion, but you're totally right. <laughs> at the end of the day, you're really trying to find um, your new normal uh, relationship with, with those stakeholders. And that's true from the inside out with, you know, your senior people with your staffs, with, with your suppliers and supply chain um, and with your, with your customers. And your supply chain is an important part of this as well because you wanna make sure at the end of the day that you might with the very best of intentions come up with a great plan for that customer, but your supply chain may not have the ability to deliver uh, on their end of that promise. Um, and that, right. that's, that's a big problem, right? Nobody wants to over promise and under, under deliver. 
it may not even be supply. It may be logistics. It may be the ability to get that supply to, to, to you, whatever they need to be in, engaged. If you haven't heard new normal, you will, and you'll be hearing it more and more and more. Um, as, as Mark and I were, we were talking yesterday and, and I'm sure the rest of you will agree. We've all heard zoom. We've all heard uh, pivot and we've all heard uh, new normal. Uh, yeah. uh, words we ever have before. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that new normal is important because I can promise you, no matter what your relationship is with that client, no matter how long they've been a client or customer uh, before, that relation that relationship will be different when we emerge from this. And it isn't going to be like a light goes on and and it's gym, it's just different. It's going to again morph and ebb and 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 change over time, but it will be different. Maybe all the more reason to communicate and to get connected in with your customers. Yeah, I mean, this isn't something that you should be doing in a vacuum. Um, and if anything, Mark, you said a word before. I this is an opportunity, right? In most cases, as consultants, we're dealing with clients who are in thriving businesses or in businesses that may have challenges that we're helping them with. They may be trying to build on strengths. Um, whatever it is they're doing, they're doing it on the fly, right? And yeah. and so we're sort of hopping on and helping off the corner of their desk in a way. And the reason is because the business still continues. This The business still goes. In a way, this is a really unique point in time. And, and at the risk of sounding, you know, overly optimistic, this is like a forced pause. This is an opportunity to maybe do some of this homework, um, albeit under duress and in a very short period of time. Um, but it's a, it'll be a valuable exercise. And, and those of you that go through it will be better for it going forward. Yeah, that's the point. And I know we're going to talk some more details about that shortly, but, but I think that's key. I think the attitude that you have about this is, is what's going to drive you through you're going to allow you to, to get through the I call it the muck of business there's always muck. we have a there's always muck in business like forget the virus for a second there's always muck there's always challenges there's always issues in business and having clarity of purpose and direction and, and is the is the impetus that allows you to move through that now add the virus to make things so much worse it's really really important that people get on the same page so that they're able to get through this and survive and if we do then we can we can build a structure that, like you're talking about and the opportunity to rise out of this uh, at a higher level than you entered. It, it, it's genuine. There is a genuine opportunity here for people to sort of look at this as a or I want to look at it as a positive, but find a positive in this and force themselves to do the things right now that normally they wouldn't be doing in order to allow themselves to get back on track and to really grow this thing. Yeah. Whether it's planning or market positioning or job descriptions or or, or creating a strategy or or whatever, right? Getting that stuff done that you've been putting off. Agreed. If that honest assessment that you do is um, is truly honest, you may find that you know life was tough before. It was a grind. We were barely barely making it. We were really really fighting week in week out, year in year out to make this go. This might be the the push. To really right. reevaluate and 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 figure out where where you go um, from here. I had a conversation last week with a very senior bank banker with one of the major banks, and the topic was just a dearth, as you can imagine, of of of, of problem uh, accounts and and businesses really struggling mightily. And and the response that I got from him wasn't what I expected. Um, he said, well, you know, there were a lot of businesses that were really struggling before, and a lot of them, I'm sure, um, we knew about before. He wasn't speaking on firsthand knowledge, but but just in general terms. And he said, and maybe this is maybe this is a uh, can be a good thing, and that it is that it rationalizes the the space without prolonging the agony in some in in some cases. That may sound harsh, but. Um, it, it may in fact be it, it may in fact be true. Um, I think that um, once you've done that assessment, the next thing we're is not going to let that happen to anybody on this call, though. Sorry, everybody, everybody listening to the webinar, we're not going to let that happen to them. No, 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 no. These these were you know this was just a philosophical uh, con conversation. But 
But I think that on, on the on the contrary, I think that people who take what we're talking about here seriously won't, because I do think that there's an opportunity here, and that's the overriding message is there's an opportunity to to really come through this better, stronger, smarter um, uh, than you were. You may not be bigger, um, yep. but nobody will be. Um, yep. And the idea but, is but that you know, I think the foundation you're talking about is more important. Right. I mean, if you have a solid foundation, then in the future, you can be bigger, more profitable. You can grow faster. If you have a rock solid foundation, the problem is many of these companies were growing without a rock solid foundation, without clarity of purpose, without, you know, target market profiles and all the good stuff that you guys talk about. And without that stuff, um, they were growing rapidly, uh, but, but it was a really loose system. It wasn't a tight system. Uh, and, and then something like this hits them over the head and they're done. So, like you say, use this time use this time to fix that stuff just oh, yeah I, it. I mean this is there's no shame in this and, the, and this no. i mean it is what it is and there are some big successful companies that have been around for a long long time that are yeah. absolutely on the ropes right now and 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 you know it's not just small you know small entrepreneurial businesses that are struggling i assure you um so um it's Wait, more personal sorry where do we go from here so I think that the next step is obviously to adapt. I think that the reason you want to have that 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 honest assessment is because you may find that the answer is um, is is more dramatic than in some cases than in others. So um, so chair, basically change has been heralded. The 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 glove is dropped. So so now what? Well, I think that in speaking to a wide range of, of people like we are today, um, how this looks will be different in individual cases. But I think first you want to invest time in stepping back just far enough to explore how you can deploy your assets, um, your core offering um, to the best of your, of your ability. Um, I think what, to the extent possible, you want to unclutter that with two weeks ago. I think you want to look at your at your situation right now, having done that honest assessment, and determine how you deploy those those um, positives, those those core abilities um, uh, going forward. I think that in some cases there is going to be a new normal. I think in some cases there's going to be a next normal. Um, and I think that um, if you reimagine the next normal, uh, then then that may be the life the lifeline for for many businesses. Um, it may prove to be a viable short term solution for certain businesses. Um, it may turn out to be a significant shift or pivot um, uh, in your business. So. It may be that you find there's an opportunity that is is 10 degrees or 20 degrees or 50 degrees from where you where you've been focused um, before, but allow yourself those conversations. Don't let it preoccupy your your conversation at this point, but at least at least reserve some of that intellectual equity that you have within your organization. Um, to, to thinking outside of the current uh, or the past box. So I would suggest that what might really drive that thinking and, and, and um, give it momentum is to look out there and, and look at need. Yep. Need becomes your friend and the world has never been needier. Right. Um, People are are in need in a variety of different ways all over the all over the world. So that's um, the thoughts, right? The, right. The understanding your core competency and understanding the need and figuring out how those two things connect, right? That's hundred percent exhaust what you're saying. That's, Absolutely. That's cool. And so I'm excited to talk about some examples for people so they can start to get their head around how that might work for them. But that's that I think is understanding that that's like a spark when those two things connect. Yeah, it is, and and we're seeing it. Some of it is is newsworthy. Some of it, Mark uh, has experienced. I've experienced with our clients and and associates. Um, 
And the interesting thing is that that these these stories are not reserved to the ones to the businesses that are in business. Um, it's some of the ones that are out of business. I mean, if if uh, adversity is the the mother of invention, this might be proof because yes. there are a lot of, of smaller companies that are reinventing themselves on the fly as we speak, mm -hmm. doing some incredibly meaningful things. Um, um, and they're going to rechart their future when the dust settles at, at, at the end of this in many cases. So I would say that in the um, in-business group, um, uh, there, are, there are a number of, of, of examples. We've all heard of Ford and Chevrolet and making ventilators. We've, we've heard about um, um, some of the, the, the bigger things. One of the most amazing things is when this whole thing started three whole weeks ago, yeah. it seems like three years ago, um, the, the results of a, of a COVID-19 test took five days. Um, it took five days before we had those results. There was a new technology developed a couple of weeks ago that reduced that timeline to 45 minutes. And now just in the last couple of days, there's another new one that reduces it to five. Fantastic. So in three weeks, we've gone from five days to five minutes. Um, extraordinary. Um, now, uh, done by very clever and smart scientists and so on, but nonetheless, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, Bauer, uh, Canadian hockey uh, equipment manufacturer, um, they, they make visors for, for, for hockey helmets. Um, they sat down, figured out what they needed to do, um, they developed not one but two um, medical grade protective uh, visors, uh, one that's disposable, one that's not, one that can be disinfected and reused. And my understanding is they started production of those visors yesterday. So, um, they had core so that link the way you would describe it then. So they, they understood their core competency, which was supply chain, which is uh, production, which is under certain certain basic skill sets that they have within that company that are core. They understood a need in the marketplace and they figured out how to connect those two things. Right? So they were able to make what seems like a radical, crazy, wild pivot, but internally, probably not such a big shift as it looks like from the outside, right? They took the time to figure out what they really, really did well. And they right. had the time and space to deploy those those um, strengths um, in a way that that obviously is hugely beneficial. There are lots of other companies that that, that make vi protective visors for for hockey and other things, but these guys these guys redeployed that 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 skill, and they're out of business. So There's we have, nobody playing hockey right now. So we, I mean, we've got a client in the construction construction equipment business. They sell construction equipment. Um, they're now selling emergency beds. The, the, the construction equipment ended, came to an end. They basically laid everybody off. And within less than a week, they found a new market, brought everybody back on. Now they're selling these emergency beds, places like New York and so forth, just like crazy. Again, an understanding their core competency, what they really were at the, at the core of it was a sales organization. They had tremendous skill sets and abilities around, um, around, around their sales team. And so they were able to, it didn't matter what the product was really when push came to shove, they were able to make this incredibly, this incredible pivot and, and go hundred miles an hour from one direction into a new direction, I don't want to say without dropping, missing a beat, but pretty close, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think too, there are a whole number of them that are emerging now um, uh, out of out of technology and, and, and the move to be uh, online. And yeah. so I, I think you see things like, um, there's a large organization, uh, I was in a meeting with them on Zoom the uh, day before yesterday, uh, large personal training uh, organization. They have in two weeks, they have developed an online platform and are now working with their clients this week, uh, tomorrow or the next day. Uh, they're working with their, their clients at home uh, yep. online. Um, yep. So if that one isn't, I wouldn't say is, I wouldn't say it's a pivot, but I would say that it's really creative thinking and, and they figured out what, made them different, why why they were unique, what their their unique selling proposition was, and they found a way of delivering it uh, in an environment very different from what they're they're used to. Their their bricks and mortar is shuttered. Um, yeah. and we see it with 
um, uh, with others as well. We have uh, one one client that is in, they do um, uh, coaching. Um, they've just moved uh, completely online. These are these sound simple, but these have not been simple transitions. These have been very very uh, major transitions in a very short period of time by companies that are very modest in size. My, my, my daughter would normally be dancing and training in, in New York City. She's obviously not able to do that now. She, she's training here. The, the teacher is in New York and doing everything online. And, and the kids are around the world and, they're, and they're, they're training virtually online. It's amazing how innovative people can be uh, when they have to be. That's very true. Yeah. So um, those are examples, I think, of, of of adapting and and um, I just heard a story today about um, it's a local company they deliver food uh, to residential but also to offices so I was talking to one of their clients who um, uh, they called and they and they said look we've continued to deliver uh, your food for the last uh, week but there was no one there to receive it we're not going to leave food to sit and rot um, uh, outside. Would you like to suspend your service, right? Or if you decide to continue your service, we will happily deliver that food to um, people who are, are in need of that food. Um, and I mean, it was a yeah. no-brainer decision that was made. But I think that that was was an incredibly smart. Um, move and they were very forthcoming about why that was important because they had had to lay off people but they were trying to keep a core uh, you know group of people on uh, working and that this was a way that they could do it if 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 uh, enough of their clients decided to to do that um, I, I was talking to a design build company just yesterday for for resident residential design build company and um, we were discussing some of the challenges and and realizing that People are, are at home right now, and there's potentially this shift going on where people have to work in their home offices. And, and so hmm, why not make a shift and become an expert in and focus on and help people to build um, and design in home offices? Right. And when you start to realize, like, it's an example, what's your core competency? What's the need? Can you somehow find a new way to connect between those two things? And, you know, we can give all these examples, um, but what's most important is that people understand there's a methodology to why these examples are working so they can apply those thoughts to themselves and come up with a new new normal, as you put it, I love that, a new normal for themselves, uh, how they can connect those things. What do your customers really need or what other need is in the marketplace and what are you really good at? Yeah. So the fourth and final step in the process um, is prepare. So, um, I'd like to say launch, but launch, we all know what that means and it has timelines and it has specificity about it that I think in this circumstance is virtually impossible. So when I say prepare, what I mean is, um, is putting together um, the program to the very best of your uh, ability, addressing every possible contingency uh, knowing, understanding, and embracing that that reality is probably going to change 10 times between now and when the go button gets pushed. And yeah. it's probably then going to change 10 more times because when the go button gets pushed, you are not going to be going back to the old normal. You're going to be going to a new normal for sure. Yeah. But that for may sure. not be static and likely won't be static. It will continue yeah. to morph and move. These I same... So I think Sorry. your point's worth. I think your point is worth repeating. Like, like there, people will not be going back to the same thing that they left. I think. I think we need to hammer that home quite hard. You know, a lot of people are going to want to think that they're just going to kind of hunker down and wait for a bit, and then it's going to go back to the way it was, and then business is just the, just going to function as it was before this thing. I think nine times out of ten, that is not going to be the case. It's highly unlikely. I don't have a crystal ball here or anything, but I think it's highly unlikely and we should not pretend it's going to be that way. In other words, doing nothing is 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 not a good strategy right now. No. Well, I mean, for sure. But I, I think that it, I think the strategy needs to be doing your very best to figure out what that what that new normal is going to look yeah. like at the point when the, 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 yeah. the 
go button gets pushed. And the reason is because it, it again, is an opportunity when you think about it, because it's a go-to-market strategy that has the adva advantage um, of, of, of being a first-to-market um, uh, opportunity for, for many companies. If, if you are ready, if you're ready when that, when that button gets pushed um, and, and your competition isn't, then you're going to have a head start. You, you're going to be out there and going uh, while they're figuring out, you know, what, what the next step is, is, is going to be. So um, I think that being ready, being prepared um, is a good thing. Having so the Having the knowledge right. that your stakeholders are on board, that they're bought in, that they're vested in that in that plan, really, really, really powerful. So how do you think based on that marketing strategies or, or marketing channels and so forth um, are potentially going to change in the future then? What you know, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what what do you think uh, what do you think some of the major shifts potentially could be and how can a business deal with those shifts going forward? Well, the one that I think that is is overwhelming is I think that a lot of businesses had their toes in the water with respect to um, employees working from from home, for example. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's nothing new. It's been happening. And I think it's been compressing the need for office space um, um, around the world as the need for more space has 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 uh, diminished. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of people who have been redeployed at home uh, yeah. in the last three weeks. Yeah. Um, I so I, I just staggering. Um, and and what you hear over and over and over again is is how relatively easy it was. And I'm sure that it wasn't. And I'm sure that I mean, I know what hiccups we all had as individuals, but but the fact is that the infrastructure is there, the technology is there, and this might be one of those little pushes where companies now have the ability to say, hey, we, we can do this remotely. And um, there is statistical information out there. I've heard of a, a little bit, one of your people, uh, Mark, was, was telling us earlier today that there's a survey that suggests that a, a vast majority of, of workers would opt for an opportunity to work from home rather than than in an office. So then in, uh, in, then in working at, as you had talked about earlier, in, in sort of that that prepared stuff, that preparedness that you have to work at right now might be how do you figure out to make that happen? If that's going to be part of your new normal, potentially, if that's or, or some aspect of that or part of that or something, even even a small part of that, then then what do you have to do internally to be able to manage an environment like that successfully? Because if, if a business hasn't been there, they may not have the structure in place to properly be successful with remote workers. So some of the, I know that's maybe a big topic for today, but important for people to think about that and focus yeah, on the that. The cool thing is that they're already there. So now you get to take it to the next level and say, okay, clearly what we don't have is some of that experiential um, um, uh, the, that experiential piece. Um, how do we how do we compensate for that? What does that look like, and so on? I think the bigger question, though, is the question is what it, what would those commercial uh, uh, real estate owners uh, be doing to 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 recognize that um, this is going to be a quantum shift for them too? Um, and and I think that that is um, that that's coming. It was already happening. This is just turbocharged it. And I think the same is true of retail as well. I think um, the surge in, in sales in the last three weeks um, uh, online is astounding. Um, and I think, again, it was, a, it was a, a well on the way, but this has just pushed it um, to a whole different, different level. And there are a whole lot of people today that have now experienced online shopping um, that never did before. Um, and that will only, uh, only get more and more, I think. So Peter, we could, I feel like we could talk for hours about this, but we are running to the end of our hour. Um, there are a few questions that people have been asking. And so, uh, we've got some of them, they've been summarized for me a little bit here, so we can kind of pull them together a little bit. 
Um, and if people have more questions we haven't answered, they obviously just feel free to reach out directly, no problem at all. So let me let me lay a couple of questions if you don't mind. We can we can tackle and, and uh, see if we can help people. One of them was um, there. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it seems like everywhere we turn, organizations are trying to position their products and services in the context of COVID-19. From a marketing perspective, how do we stand out in all this noise? So that's a great question. First of all, any any kind any time you say crowded, uh, it's not a good thing from a marketing perspective because you're yeah. obviously trying to do the opposite. Um, what I would suggest is that if you don't stand out, then don't try to stand out because I think the ones that are trying, um, uh, there's there's a hollowness about about that messaging. Um, yeah, is, is it you know is it also maybe about you know, let's go go back to some of the things you said before you know really understanding who your customers are and what your customers' needs are and then being able to position yourself maybe more directly in line with those needs than necessarily. Uh, just trying to find the buzzword of the day or the issue of the day and, and position yourself as an expert in that from that angle. But what are your clients? Talk to your clients, right? Talk to your talk to your your top 10, 20, 30 percent of your clients or depending on how many you have and get a real understanding. That's where you were talking about before. Yeah, I I I um I mean most of the, the COVID-19 specific uh, messaging that I've been seeing is, you know, we're, we're, we're here for you, um, yep. uh, things like that. And, um, you know, and, and some of those just feel more substantial than others. Yep. Um, I mean, some of them feel a little more gratuitous. I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest. And yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. Weird at times you just kind of, okay, everybody's here for me. But when you hear that and when you read, and when you read the, the, what what they're saying, and if it's really, you know, our 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 we're we're open for business this way, this way, this way, albeit not what it used to be. So our services declined with this, with this, with this, but we're here for you. Um, let me, let me give you I have maybe an, maybe an example. So I was talking to one of our clients yesterday, uh, commercial printing business, and their and their business has certainly been hit hard by this. But they're doing a really cool thing. They're making all of these stickers that have these really positive, feel good messages, like just quotes and just really positive, make you feel, make you smile. Kind of, they're slapping those on all of the packages that they send out. So they're just trying to share the love and share the joy a little bit with, with their customers just to kind of lift everybody's mood. That's an example, I think, of a really great way to, to, to cut through this message in, in a positive way. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that this is, it, it's not something that you want to chase from a marketing standpoint. I think what you want to chase is the opportunity to deploy your your talents and abilities um, to the best of your ability. And if there there's something there that works out, it's great. Uh, hopefully, whatever that is, it'll be relevant beyond COVID, you know, and long after yeah. COVID is gone. COVID at the end of the day, hopefully COVID is the catalyst as opposed to the objective, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, I got one more, one more I just want to um, ask. Uh, and it says uh, there will be, uh, what kind of questions, here, um, oh yeah, here, here, what kind of questions can I ask my customers to find out what they really need? So, you know, we talked about the importance of connecting with customers, but what are some of the questions that they might actually ask? And just help them a little bit. Well, again, I mean, um, um, I think generally, and again, trying to speak to to everybody, customers are different than clients. So I'm guessing that this is more of a product, uh, a, a, a company, or a retail um, organization. So I mean, I would be asking them um, first of all, how are you doing? What is it yeah. that that um, you know? What's working for you? What isn't? Um, and having a frank conversation around what their um, struggles are. Um, and I think that that you'll probably find pretty quickly that you'll you'll narrow those goalposts and, and be able to drill down into what you might be able to do um, and what part of the solution you you might be. You may not even be part of that solution. I don't want to suggest that there's a that you always can be. Circumstances may be way beyond you, them, and and, and a whole industry. But 
Um, I think that that an honest attempt to to um, to ask to be um, to be um, to really want to know what the answer is and to be able to address it to the extent that you can is super important. Right. I hope that answers the, the, the question. It's a starting point. Yeah. Well, that's great. So we're, uh, we're kind of out of time, but um, those, those are just a couple of questions in aggregate. So maybe Sam, you could just bring up on the screen, if you don't mind the next slide. Uh, there we go. And we're going to talk a little bit about our action. We like to wrap these things all the time up with a bit of an action plan, a bit of a homework uh, in the nicest way for the next week for people to, to, to attack. So the first thing um, is client outreach. And you should comment on any of this that you want to, Peter, please too. But, but we're going to ask people to reach out to all of your major customers or clients. And first, let's ask them how they're doing. <laughs> like, you know, get, get personal and make sure they know you care because you do and just make sure they're okay. How are they doing? And then as you you're talking about, Peter, how can we find out, you know, what are some of their greatest needs and challenges right now? How might we be able to help you? And, and just ask and be open to whatever kind of responses you get. Uh, it's going to be really valuable information doing that, I, I promise. Next thing that, you know, Peter talked about is kind of the company brainstorming meeting where you identify your core competency, which is the answer to the question, what do you do better than anybody else? What's, the, what's your major uh, skill set inside your organization? And then you want to compare that to your customers' needs, just like we discussed. Um, and then also explore other needs in the marketplace that you might be able to serve. And then somewhere between all of that stuff, you're going to see a, a spark or a connection and find some kind of opportunity of how you can deliver differently or use your skill set to, to resolve another need out there in the marketplace and so forth. Um, did you have any, anything you wanted to add to that, Peter, or was that good? No, I think that, um, again, it's, it's difficult because all of you – um, are very, very different in size and scope and, and, and everything else. But um, it, that's a really, really important um, uh, a meeting to have, um, even like I said, if it's with yourself in the mirror. Um, because I think that that is going to serve you not only well in this this challenge right now, but but going forward. Awesome. And then we've got a couple of resources this time again that we're going to deliver to you after the webinar. One I think you might find interesting, it's a, um, well, first we'll send you a core competency document to help you to understand what your core competency is for your company, because that can be a little, a little challenging at first to get your head through. So we're going to give you some tools just to make that an easier conversation so you, so you understand it. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to give you was a copy of the U.S. Essential Critical infrastructure. And the reason I want to send that is because when you go through that, you're going to find out a whole long list of businesses. And that's the, Ameri the United States. A lot of people are listening from the U.S., although there's people I know listening from all over the world right now. But it doesn't matter. It's just going to be a general list of businesses and industries, I should say, and businesses within those industries um, that are essential services and that you can realize are in business that are functioning. And you should ask yourself, do those industries or those businesses have needs that potentially we could serve, such as the bed, such as the, the example I gave about beds. You know, is there something within that? And so there'd be some interesting ideas for you that should come out of your brainstorming conversation. Uh, we'll get that to you. So with that, I want to say thank you for your time. I want to say, Peter, thank you so much. I know you're busy. I know your clients are, are you know, I've talked earlier in the day, you're nonstop with clients all day long, uh, helping people through this stuff. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to speak with us. And uh, everybody have a fantastic day. Go get them. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, our next webinar is next week. Same time, same place. Have an awesome day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.